There's one more concept that I want to talk to you about, and that's overloading methods. Within a class, you can have multiple methods that have the same name but different signatures, and this is known as overloading. So we're going to create within this month class two methods that are called get month. One of the methods is going to take an integer for the month and then return the string value of that month. And then we'll have an overloaded method that will take the string version of the month and return the integer. So let me type this really quickly. Okay, notice here, these both have the exact same name. And this is perfectly legal. In fact, you can have however many overloaded methods you want, but they have to differ by the parameter list. For example, if I change this one to string, then now we see that we have a compilation error. And it's saying that this method is already defined. So the parameter list must be unique for each of the overloaded methods. So I'm going to quickly type in the real implementation for this. So we have two different implementations for this. But what I want you to recall is that we have defined these as static. So in the last section, I told you about how we can call methods that are static from another class without instantiating them. So let me show you how to do that by executing these. So we're going to go ahead and print. And we are going to use the month class. And we're just going to say dot. And notice now I can call these two methods without instantiating this month class because these methods are static. So when I have static methods within a class, there's no need to instantiate that class in order to access them. So I can just say get month and I'll give it two. And so that should print out February and then we'll do another one. And this time we'll call the other get month that takes a string and we'll say January. So when we run this, we should get February and one. So let's run it. Yep, February and one. Here's your optional exercise for this chapter. We're going to redo the phone bill calculator to use object-oriented approach this time. So a phone bill should have an ID, a base cost, a number of allotted minutes and a number of minutes used. And then it should also be able to calculate the overage, calculate the tax, and calculate the total. And then there should also be behavior to print an itemized bill. You should also include three constructors, a default one, one that accepts the ID only, and one that accepts all fields. Now, no matter which of these constructors you use, all fields should be set. Then you're going to create a different class that instantiates the phone bill and prints out an itemized bill. Good luck.